Hello everybody and welcome to Resident's Arcade, episode 79, the last standard episode in our current season. Um, kind of. We, we, we're going to be doing things a little bit different today. Um, as you can see, Dan, well, as those who are watching can see, Dan is not here today, but Matt is. Oh, um, and we're not going to do our competition today and we're also not going to do our news section today. We're just going to talk about games. We've had a few weeks off for various different reasons. Um, and it's it's basically we've been having real real problems, and I'm just taking over what Matt's supposed to say here as well. To be fair, but um, we're, we're having real scheduling problems. We're going to start again next week, and we're going to have a, an episode about um, a, a summary episode, the end of season episode with the competition, which is a bit weird, but doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's fine. No. So, we are professional. Yeah, we're kind of professional. Anyway, <laughs> it's it's all basically gone wrong over the last few weeks. So we're just going to get straight into it. Going to straight into games that we've been playing. I've been playing tons, but I'm going to let Matt start because I, I can just reel off hundreds of games this week. <laughs> I I've not been playing hundreds of games. I've been playing three. Okay, which, well, which, it's, it's a smaller scope, but still I think better I than Danny. <laughs> who's not here to defend himself. So let, let's just try this. Danny, what have you been playing this week? See, it's like he's here. Same, yes, yeah, same, same as last time. <laughs> so since our last episode, I've been playing a couple of things. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, because I was just playing it before the podcast, is the new Modern Warfare, which I am thoroughly enjoying. Yeah. What's it called, this one? Because I haven't followed it. I haven't been a it, COD fan for years. It's just Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That's all it's called. So they're, they're doing the kind of Hollywood thing with the name where, you know, instead of like two, three, four, they'll just like, yeah, we're going back to the original. We're just going to call this one Modern Warfare. So is it a reimagining or is it is it a completely new, is it just a new slate? It's it's a new game. And I think um, it does have some of the characters from the old game, like Captain Price. And right. I think... I think the character of Alex is an older character, but I'm not sure on that. I think it might it, it might be from Black Ops. Um, so it's it's a new story. It's not a remake, which is what I thought it was for some reason. So it's a new story. It's set in uh, in and around the fictional country of us something. It's, I'm not sure, but it's basically like it's it's like a a very easy to defend way of saying that it's Syria, but it's not Syria, but that's kind of what it seems to be. Yep. I it, guess. They're all the same. They, they, they all, they're all in some Middle Eastern country that we can, yeah, that, yeah. that Westerners can easily annihilate without blinking. Uh, yeah. Let's not exactly. get into the politics of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not what the get shows about. Um, so, yeah, you are, you're in the Middle East, as is expected with a modern warfare game. It flicks back and forward around the the world. There's a, a little bit in London. There's a little bit elsewhere, and like there's the Russians. Even basically, it's the typical kind of incredible soapbox drama that you'd expect from a modern warfare game, where everything there's all these big characters and there's all these evil people, and you've got to go out into the world and hit them with a crowbar. But but not like in Half Life. It's a different type of crowbar. <laughs> And I'm not sure anyone can swing a crowbar quite as fast as Morgan. Morgan Free. Morgan Free. <laughs> That's not the right person. So close, Chris. It's God, God, Gordon, Gordon Freeman. Gordon Freeman. There we go. Although, I am interested to see how fast Morgan Freeman can swing a crowbar, but like a Twinkie. <laughs> <laughs> Titty sprinkles. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's. I've not played COD for maybe four or five games. I think the last one I played was Black Ops 2, and I didn't really care for it. I, I, I kind of fell out with it. I was talked into buying it in about 15 seconds over the weekend. And it's it's nice to go back to it. It very much feels like playing Modern Warfare again, but just better graphics. And yeah, I really enjoying it. Who's, uh, who's the developer this time around? It's Infinity Ward, or what is left of them after the split and became Respawn, I believe. I couldn't tell you. Again, I've, I'm completely out of the loop with that side of things. It was, there was Treyarch at one point. Was that Black Ops? Treyarch um, were the company that made Black Ops and the and uh, World at War as well. I think and they, they were bit. I think they were basically brought in as like a second developer so that they could they could have one company working on a game over two years. And then they could they could still have a game out every year that way. Fair enough, right? 
Yeah, I said it's uh, last one I played, probably Black Ops 1. Um, thoroughly enjoyed Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 3. Don't know why I said them in that order, but thoroughly enjoyed the story, the campaign, and played a hell of a lot of multiplayer Modern Warfare 2 on mm. the 360 with a you know close group of friends. Um, I liked the arcadiness of it back then, but I've got to be honest... I don't really want to go back to playing an FPS on a console. So, you know, if I did go for it, it'd be it'd be a PC, which I'm presuming is what you're playing it on. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing it on PC. I, I, I couldn't really play an FPS game on a console anymore. No. It's not really the same thing. But it's... The, the combat and things like that haven't really changed, but that, in a way, that's nice because it's kind of like going back to familiar territory. There's, there's nothing that's really too over the top or too in-depth. It, it's arcade and I like that. It's, mm. you pick it, you pick it up you know exactly what you're doing straight away and I I just enjoy it it's it's the same it's the same setup as you'd expect it's the same kind of you know you move to an area then it's kind of like a enemies pop up you shoot them and eventually like an NPC C says oh, okay let's move on but it's enjoyable the set pieces are nice and fun and you know there's always something going on and just there's little things like you know you can go up to the corners and start in rather than just like you know, walk around the corner, you can peek a little bit and things like It's not like Rainbow Six levels of, like, tactical intimacy, but it's still exciting and it's still mm. interesting to play. And the, they do a lot to break it up with the little different things. Like, there was a segment where you were helping out, like, some a Freedom Force, like a Freedom Fighter kind of group, um, and they didn't have anything to attack a Russian base with apart from... RC planes with bombs strapped to them, so you get to pilot these little RC planes and things mm. like that. It, it's it is daft. I well, can't. It was I can't always pretend. known for its gadgets, and it, you know, it's it's over the top kind of. Um, I said, yeah, gadgetry, and and I remember um, playing playing the multiplayer, and and you had to build up a certain amount of kills before you could launch some kind of ICBM at everybody on the map or something. I can't even remember. Was it? Yeah. Was it if, called? If you, if you got twenty four kills without dying, um, and you had it selected, you could get the uh, tactical nuke. That's it. Tactical nuke. Just, yeah. It just ended the game. Yeah. Be because, I mean, if you've got twenty four kills in a row without dying, then pff, what's the point in playing anymore? Yeah, you're too good. You're too good for this game. Just exactly. Do everyone new kit, new lobby. Yeah. But I'm I'm really enjoying it. Like I I haven't been. I haven't enjoyed an FPS game for quite a while, and going back to this after such a long break, it's it's finally fresh again for me, and really, really enjoying it. Yeah, I've struggled with FPS games for a long time myself. But closest I get are things like Dishonored, you know, and they're not FPSs; the the more you know, stealth it's... and multi, you know, multiple ways to complete a level, that kind of thing, non-linear. Um, yeah, it's, I probably won't get it myself. To be fair, it's it's probably not, especially at full price. You know, in fact, I probably won't get it at lower price. I haven't got any of the more recent battlefields or or cods or, or anything like that. I don't even I haven't even got Overwatch. You know, I, I'm not. I'm just not into FPS games. I killed. I absolutely saturated myself with them back in the day. That's yeah. the biggest problem I've had. It's just fighting to get back into that mindset. And at the moment, I am, and I'm enjoying it. it hey. Why not? Yeah. I can't say if it's worth every penny just yet, but... Mm. It, Are you, you going to be playing multiplayer with friends, I presume? At the, well, I'm going to try and take advantage of it while everybody else is still on the hype train and just try and get at least a few good games in. I mean, we did play a quick game of Spec Ops last night, which is like a four-person co-op game. So you you have like a bigger map and you've got objectives around the map. So the one we played, uh, it it's started out, you get dropped in. Um, with a parachute and then you have to move up to like a like a little group of houses and like fi like tech out a load of guys and find find like some thumb drives with information then it's like right now move on to this next area and you can get on quad bikes and things and it's just a little different and it's a nice way of still doing multiplayer because your progress counts towards your multiplayer progress as well with unlocks and things like that and it's just a nicer way of it's a nice way of kind of going and playing the game if you're not really into being competitive or things like that, is that a ver is that a mode in Modern Warfare or are you talking about Spec Ops the line the game? No, no, it's a it's a mode. Right. Um, so it's like scenarios where you can play with four four people. No, that'd be quite interesting. I think I'd, I'd prefer that I think than the competitive deathmatch multiplayer version. Um, 
efforts, but yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've not I've said I've not really touched any FPSs over the last oh god at least at least couple of months. Um, I've been I've been almost married to my Switch recently. Um, I've been as I was saying to you just before the show, I've been I've downloaded tons of demos because I really want to take advantage of my Switch. It sits there gathering dust. I've completed the games that I got on it, and I've completed them over and over. And I'm 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 going back to Odyssey. I'm going back to Breath of the Wild. I'm I've basically done Breath of the Wild on Master Mode now, and I've I've got to the last boss, and I can't quite bring myself to finish it. But I've got all of the Sheikah sli- all of the um, temples, all all everything basically, every single item, and a hundred percent of the thing. And I just can't bring myself to finish do the last Ganon battle again. Um, oh, I, d- I haven't done all of the uh, the dungeons. Uh, there's there's a in the game of the year edition or the DLC. You get a load of uh, it's like fifty levels of dungeon, and it just gets harder and harder. You have to start naked without any weapons, uh, and it's in master mode. It's almost impossible to to kill like the people on the first level. And I, I've got them maybe about three or four levels in, and it's just insane. You have to because there's durability on all the weapons as well, so. You start with oh. a stick, and you have to kill like four moblins, and then a gold moblin with a stick. And it's like, in master mode, it's just not, not fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, I've been playing lots of demos on my Switch. Um, I mean, it's cheaper than buying the games. <laughs> well, there's a reason I'm doing that because I want to find the next game that I want to get on my Switch. I don't because the problem is, is it's not like a PC, is it? You can't generally get things quite cheap. Um, no, occasionally. Yeah, but it, it's the Nintendo tax with everything. It's unless you're buying it secondhand on eBay or something like that. You know, the the store itself is never going to be that cheap. No, and I've I've you know I've been to the local shops around here, and there's not actually that many in um in uh like the the secondhand section in all of the local shops. There's there's a few, and but. In fact, there's there's tons of games I've never heard of. There's loads of Japanese titles, not 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 Jap versions, but Japanese kind of anime titles that I'm not particularly interested in. Um, there's a few. Occasionally, I'll see one and I'll be like, oh, maybe I'll try that out, but I'm not sure I want to spend thirty quid on it because that's that's still cheap for a Switch game, you know. Sometimes you see them for fifteen, twenty quid, and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll give it a go. Anyway, so I've been trying demos. So I've tried um, Octopath Traveler. Which mm-hmm. have you heard? Of, you've heard of that? I've tried it, played it. I've I've played through the demo myself. It's not for me. Okay, really. Well, it, for those who haven't heard of it, it is a you. you there's basically eight characters. It's a two D version of Final Fantasy VII. Basically, it's very much what it looks like and and kind of plays like. But the characters don't really interact with each other. Yeah, and I think in the demo, I managed to get three characters. Um, but they just don't. Nothing happens. You just go and do you do their origin story and there must be some other part of this. Obviously I can't do it all within the demo because uh, you get three hours to play. Um, and then it, you know, you, you run through the levels, the levels are fairly, or the, the areas, the screens rather are fairly samey looks beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it doesn't have much variation and you, you just randomly start battles like you do in Final Fantasy VII, you know? You, you're walking around in the overworld and you suddenly start a battle and then you start another one a second later and then you start another one. It's like you just grind in it. And yeah, I, I kind of want to play it, but i also not sure. I mean, it's 50 quid full price, I think. Yeah. yeah. Not, not for me. <laughs> um, I mean, there might be enough content in it. You know, it might be plenty of hours gameplay, but yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I want to invest that much. Um other than that, I have been. Uh, I downloaded R Type uh, HD version, and it's one of them. It's it's basically the original game, but you can switch between HD within with you press press Y. Hang on, what's the top button on the Switch? It's not Y. That's on uh, the Xbox. X, I think. X maybe. I think it's X at the top. Um, you press X, and it switches very fluidly between HD, which is horrible, and the original and the original soundtrack as well. So it's quite quite a cool. But it's just our type. It's the same thing we've probably both played a million times before. Um, I tried a Toma Chef, which is like a factorio uh, for making burgers. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, doesn't so, work. So fat Oreo. Yeah, it doesn't work on the Switch. It's too complicated. Yeah, I think you can get it on Steam as well, but it's way too complicated for the for the control system. I know you've got enough buttons, but you know what it's like when you try and play a builder game or a management game on a on a console. It's the same as like it's, it misses precision, and that's what you really need with these sort of games. Yeah, well, I'm just, I don't think it's precision. I suppose maybe it is. It's more there's so many menus and so many drop downs and different options and stuff you can click on. It. When I close the menu, I just want to press escape i don't want to have to go to cancel and you know and that kind of thing it's speed i think more than anything um does it work with the touch screen though because that might be you know what i didn't try it i often forget about the touch screen um yeah same here that's it, it's not obvious is it Cause a lot of games don't really ask you to do anything with the touch screen yeah and sometimes when you remember it it doesn't work at all and then other times yeah. Uh, other times it works. I think I, there's another one I was playing. I was playing Dragon Quest Builders 2. Um, okay. I downloaded 1 and 2, but I've only played 2. Um, you can only do like the first, the tutorial and the kind of the first island in it. I actually quite like it, and I think I'm probably going to get it, but again, probably not full price because it's yeah. about 50 quid. Um, I think it's on the PS4 as well, and I believe the reviews for the PS4 were better. Do you, have you heard of the Dragon Quest games or... I've heard of them, but it's something I've never... Was it, wasn't it created by the same guy who made um, Dragon Ball Z? It looks... The, the the main guy that you play looks very much like the main guy that you see in Dragon Ball Z. I don't know of that world, so I don't know if it was oh. or not, but it, it, I, I imagine it probably was by the looks yeah. of it. But I quite like it. It's it, And it, it works for a builder game, which I've just criticised on the Switch. It actually, the <laughs> control system's not too bad. It's not overly complicated. It's quite fun. There's combat in it. There's building in it. But I don't know how much depth there is. I don't know if you're following a formula. Like you go to different islands. I don't know if it's randomly generated or not. Um, you go to different islands and you you build things to do missions and you do fetch quests and you gather different materials and stuff and then take them back to your home and then build something and then take a photo and upload it onto the Switch community type thing. Yeah, I think there's a there's a main mission as well as a main area, but it's quite nice. And I've I've been looking for a builder game for the Switch that works. And I think I don't know. I'm up and up and down because the PS4 reviews have got a lot better, um, a lot better feedback than the Switch reviews. So, um, but on the same note, I also tried Portal Knights, which is like a Minecraft builder kind of night quest game and again you can only do the starting area in the demo and it just felt a little bit laggy um a little bit mm. janky uh, i think it's on switch uh, i think it's on steam as well so maybe i'll put it on my wish list and get it if it becomes really cheap you know yeah um other than that i went for i tried yoshi's crafted world which is brilliant i only played that you can only play the first level um, is that is that the one where everything looks like it's made out of felt? Felt, cardboard, yeah. rubber bands. Um, I played, I've played, and I've got for the Wii U, um, Yoshi's Woolen World, and I played quite a lot of it, but I don't think I completed it. Um, I think yeah. the, the the I think the Wii U kind of the the time of the Wii U kind of disappeared before I, I you know I, I put it in its box basically before I actually got around to finishing it. Yeah, um, but I quite enjoyed that as well. I think I'll probably get that again if I can get it cheap somewhere in a second hand second hand shop. And uh lastly, and a game I definitely want to get was uh the Cadence of Hyrule Crypt of the Necro Necrodancer. Have you played the original Crypt of the Necrodancer? For all of about five minutes. I know roughly how it works. Everything's like time orientated, isn't it? So you've got a, a kind of a pulsing beat. It's only in four four, I think. I don't think there's any compound stuff. That'd be a bit, <laughs> bit weird. And six eight, fucking eleven eleven. Um, gets to the boss battle and it's polyrhythms. Like, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> um, but it does. I mean, you can speed and slow the tempo up, and you can also change it. There's an option in the menu where you can change it so the enemies move when you move. So it's not actually based on the music. It's based on when you move. Feels a little bit like cheating when I turn that mm. on. Um, but the, the demo actually gives you quite a lot of room to play in and you can do the first boss and it's good. It's a lot better than I, I thought it was going to be. I heard about it ages ago and it's made me add 
uh, the original Crypt of the Necrodancer onto my wish list on Steam, and I think, again, I'm going to get that because I quite enjoyed it. I think I'll get that. I kind of see myself playing it on the Switch in handheld mode, you know? Um, yeah. And and think- get the demo. I'd recommend getting the demo because it's, um, it's surprisingly good. I didn't think I'd like it. I'm not a rhythm game fan normally. I like Guitar Hero and Rock yeah. Band, but they're the only rhythm games I ever I've ever really enjoyed. Add it to your just download it on Switch. Um Yeah. I'll I'll give it a try. The ca- when it says the cadence of Hyrule, is it like a tie in with Legend of Zelda? Yeah. It's oh, it's a Legend okay. of Zelda <laughs> game. Um you you basically play in it as Link. I think you can on the main the full game you can play as Zelda as well, which is mm. one of the only games I've I think you've ever been able to play Zelda in. Not that apart it matters. From, apart from Smash Bros. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've got the Wii version of that. I don't think you can play Zelda in that. S- Smash Bros. Yeah. I'm I, I'm not going to say whether you can or not, but I'm pretty sure she's always been a character in it. You know what? I'm, I'm thinking of um, uh, Smash Bros. Brawl on the Wii. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't think I could play as Zelda. You can play as Link, but um, I didn't think you could play as Zelda. But anyway, either way, yeah, so they're the, they're the games I've played on my Switch, and I'm going to let you talk about your next game first before I go through any of my other, <laughs> <laughs> other games. So the other game I've been playing um, over the last period of however long it's been since we bothered to put out an episode is Destiny 2. Um, now it's moved to Steam, and the new content is out. The community has sprung back quite a lot. Yeah. which has been really nice. There's Everything's busy again. There's a lot of people interacting. There's a lot of people for the activities. And it, it's just, it's nice to see the game kind of shake loose of, you know, the, the people that have really had the fingers in a lot of areas that they didn't need to. And it's, I was a bit hesitant to spend more money on a game that I've already spent so much money on. But I wanted I wanted to have like one final go with it just to see if I wanted to see if they had the original destiny experience, which I never had because I never played it on, on a console, but I I've heard a lot of my friends talk about it. And it's it's basically like halo meets space wizards. And (laughs) yeah, I get that. It it does feel like a lot's come back to it now. And there's a lot more content, a lot more things that you can just go and get on with things aren't like time gated as much and things aren't like artificially made longer to encourage you to keep coming back every day like which is a bit of a problem that a lot of games have now where they artificially string things out where it's like oh well you know if i want to go grind something for a full afternoon let me i've paid for the game Hmm. let me play it how i want to play it don't don't let me play it for half an hour and then say oh well come back tomorrow and you can do more because i don't want to do that yeah i don't have time to do that well you do have time to do that you just don't you want to it's about what you want to do with your time, not about what they think you should be doing with your time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the whole games is a, a live service thing. It, it's it been good for a lot of things, but at the same time, it it gets in the way of playing games. Like yet, yesterday, I know I was just saying how much I was enjoying Modern Warfare, but one thing that really did irritate me is um, I had to reset the internet while I was playing the campaign. So single player campaign, I restart the internet and, the, the game closed because I had no online connection. What? I'm playing single player. Is this strictly necessary? Why do I need to be connected to the internet? I uh, don't try to think. You can't even pass it off as cloud gaming or anything. It's a 120 gig download. You're not streaming anything to my PC. You're just doing it for presumably very intrusive DRM. Yeah. And, uh, well, it, it, maybe not just DR, maybe not DRM. Maybe it's tracking as well. Maybe they're, maybe they're doing uh, live metrics. Possibly so. Maybe they're going to send Captain Price to my house to shoot me. Who knows? Uh, that's immersion for you there, isn't it? <laughs> Just, oh, wow, is immersion it Immersion gameplay. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Destiny 2, it does feel... It feels un- a lot more unburdened. Like, the, the stuff isn't getting in your way as much. It's just like, okay, well, you've paid for this. Like, you know, we've, we've got a shot of Activision. We're by ourselves now. There's all this new content. Go have fun. And... That's all I wanted. Just give me the stuff to play. And for the people who don't want to pay for the game, there's the last two years of content are now free to play on Steam anyway. So even if you even if you don't want to play it or pay it pay for it, sorry, I'd, I'd say just go play it. It's free. 
Just I think try that's, it. that's a contributing factor to why there's so many new, well, why the communities has, you know, has been revived. Absolutely. It's, they've given a lot of content for free and it, it is good. It like, like so many other games, it just, it needs to get out of its own way with trying to be too, too smart with how it gets you to play the game. It just needs to let you give you the, give me the content. Let me go play it. That's all I want. I don't want to be stuck waiting for things or, you know, time gated or just artificially held back just because you think that I should play a game a certain way. Mm, and but they do it. It's there's marketing behind that. It's not, it's not about, uh, you know, health and safety or anything like that. They're not stopping you playing for a certain amount of time for any reason, apart from they, that is how their marketing model will work. I imagine. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. So. It, they, they want recurrent players and I get that but the best way to do that is just let people play how they want to play and give them good content to play like the it's a fun game and the combat's fun and that it it, it ruined it for itself really it, if, it had it all there to ruin and it so are you now unencumbered then you can just play whenever you want it feels it feels like that. I mean, I, I'm not sure if there's anywhere I haven't seen things. I mean, certain stuff is still like time sensitive, but it's not like it's it's it, it, it like there's um, an NPC that shows up every week in a different place um, who sells like exotic, like you know, we uh, weapons and armor. Right. And but that's about it. Like he's he's there for like over the weekend, so it's not like saying you know you've got like a four hour window to go find him. It's like if you can get on for ten minutes, you can go find him over like four days, and stuff Do, like that. I'm I'm totally fine with. But. Is he is he in the same place for every player? So you could basically people could say he's in the Barrens or wherever he is. You know, I, I don't know yeah, if that's, it, that's a place in the game, but you know, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he's 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 jumped ship to uh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> Is no, he's he's in the same place. He's he's just easy to find, and it, but little stuff like that I like because it's like a little thing of like, oh well, I guess I could go play for half an hour. I just don't want it to be like, okay, well you've had your half an hour now, go do something else, go play one of those other great game modes, you know, brought to mm. you by Activision TM. And it does feel a lot cleaner and a lot easier to just go and play and get on with. And yeah, thumbs up from me. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Well, you're still playing it, and we did say a few weeks ago, come back in a few weeks, see if you're still into it, you know? Uh, and it, I suppose it's nice to hear that. Again, it's FPS, it's not my thing. I, especially FPSs with uh, levelling and grinding, you know? I've, I think I'm cured of that, of that world. But I know it's extremely popular in the gaming world, um, and it always will be, I think. I, I think it's that marriage of... I think it's any game where it's just a little bit extra on top. <clears throat> I think it, it kind of stems from the days of like, um, well, st stuff like modern, like when the original Modern Warfare came out, and then you had a reason to keep going back and playing the multiplayer because you unlock new things. Yeah. It's the same. It's that sense of progression that you want, but you just don't want to be held back or or told not to do something until a certain time. It, it, you just don't want it to to try and dictate to you how to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm, I I play a lot of games. I play a lot of... Uh, I, I put a lot of time into a lot of games as well. Some people listening to this podcast might think that I do nothing but play games the amount I go through. I do... I do jump from different major titles like the C, you know the triple a games but i play a lot of kind of smaller indie games that i've played a lot of in the past uh, for example at the moment i've gone back to factorio i'm right. playing a lot of factorio at the moment because i want to complete it again because i've heard that there's some new stuff in there and there is and i've seen you know i've seen some new some new things since i last played it for example splitters you can now put filters on them and prioritize the left and right and i didn't realize that until a couple of days ago but I just got addicted to it. But I've hit a level now where I'm at a certain point. I, I need to start getting oil. I don't know if you've played Factorio, Matt. No, but I've seen people. I, I know the gist of it. I've played Satisfactory, and I know it's similar. Right. I've sense. not played Satisfactory yet, but it is on my list. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I've got to a point where I, I need to get oil, which is not that far into the game. It's only, you know, you could probably get to that point in a few hours. Um, but I just can't be bothered. 
I just put it down today and I thought, will I go back to it now? Probably not. But I've played like solidly for the last two or three days, I'd say. That's been my major choice. I stopped playing... Um, sometimes I have this thing where I get nearly to the end of a game, like, uh, like the Breath of the Wild, um, and I just stop playing. And I'm like 5% away, and I did the same with Dying Light this time through. I've got 5% from the end of the DLC, and I haven't went back to it. All I need to do is go back, finish one or two more story missions, which wouldn't take me long at all, and I'll have done it. But I just, I think I fatigue myself with all the side missions and all of the, the minuscule kind of things that you can do outside of the main mission. And I don't know, either that or I, I, I've got some kind of psychological condition that stops me from actually completing a computer game sometimes. <laughs> I think when you when you enjoy playing something like that, though, you kind of don't want it to end. You just mm. want to keep it, and you feel like if you don't finish it, then you can always go back to it. I don't know. So I mean, as I said I've been going back to Factory or put it probably put it down today. I might have a few more sessions on it. I'm not sure. Um, I've got enough out of it again to know the the additional stuff that's come with it. I played it with mods as well, so but, but they've actually taken a lot of the mod ideas that people had developed separately and put them into the core game as well, um, which is quite nice to see. They've also jigged up all kinds of things like how the research works, or rather the recipes for the research. Previously, you didn't have to create military packs to actually complete the game. Now you have to complete, you have to use military packs, um, and they're quite difficult. You have to create grenades and armor-piercing rounds for them, stuff which you... I'd never even kind of created a created a grenade before with a factory machine. I just crafted a few for my inventory. Um, so yeah, they changed little things like that, and it's you know it's for the better. It gives you more more gameplay, I suppose. But it is the same thing that I've done before, so that's why I'm putting it down. It's not because I don't want to finish it. It's just that I've already launched the rocket. I thought I might be able to get the uh, complete the game in eight hours achievement. Probably, in fact, I'm, I'm well past eight hours this time, so there's no chance of that. So I'll probably just like, no, I, I failed, so let's let's leave it now. Um, I also was playing The Witcher 3 um, to get to the DLC, but you need to be like level 25 or level 30 to get to the DLC. And I am going to go back to it, um, but I haven't played it probably for the last five, six days or something. Um, thoroughly enjoying it again. It runs wonderfully in 4K. The first time I played it, it was in 4K, but I was on a 980 uh, GTX, and it wasn't my best friend, put it that way. Mm. Um, I think I ended up running it in 1080 on a 4K monitor, so I didn't get the best kind of experience playing it the first time. Plus, now I've got the DLC, as I said, and I do want to get through that. Still going to go, keep going through that. I'm still playing Bloodborne. I am on the last two bosses of Bloodborne. Ooh. Um, I finished, I'm on the last two secret bosses, I finished the actual main game, but then I thought, what's this DLC about, All right? So I've done, first time in my life, I've bought uh, something on PSN and I've bought some DLC at full price, so 16 pounds, 16 whole British pounds for this DLC. Wow, you're a changed man, Chris. I am, <laughs> because I, I was, I was in an hour and I was debating it with the wife and she's watched me play the whole, the whole game. Um, and I've loved it from being really frustrated and snappy with my wife because she's talking while I'm I'm fighting a boss. I swear to God, I'm not that person, but some of them bosses have turned... The shadow of Yarnum turned me into a twat. A <laughs> absolute twat. Um, and there's a few others as well. I mean, v Vicar Amelia... V yeah, Vicar Amelia, Amelia. She was... Oh, my God, I hated it. But the last time I did her... I did a really, really easy because I learned it's all about, as we've said a million times, it's all about learning exactly what every boss takes. And exact. you get to a certain point where you know what to look for, but it's almost subliminal. You know, you, you, uh, I've just done, have you played the DLC? No. Have you completed the game? No. <laughs> okay. So I won't spoil it for you then if you do ever get to that point, but I've enjoyed it so much that I've, I've bought the DLC. There's not actually that much content in it. They, all, they also reuse a lot of the assets, um, a lot of the maps from the original game, but they they completely morph them. You know where you are. For example, the Cathedral Ward is reused in quite a, a big section, um, but it's totally different. You can recognise it, but it's not the same. Um, 
and there's some there's some enemies i've i think i'm two bosses away from the end of the dlc as well and i've only put maybe five or six hours into it so your mileage will vary every if you know if I put, you put into google is the bloodborne dlc worth it every every single uh, reddit post every single like forum post is like did you enjoy the main game then yes it absolutely is there's probably not much content some people have played it for 15 hours other people have played it for four or five hours if you're going to play a new game plus it's worth it but apparently the reason i haven't completed the main game was the dlc levels with new game plus so if okay. you complete the game and you are less than level 115 and i'm level 85 i think probably about 87 or something now um you you can't play the dlc until you're 115 uh, and i wanted to play it kind of then because uh, just in case i didn't you know didn't play a new game plus too much but i think i am i think i'm going to go through the game again on new game plus because i've enjoyed it so much and i've also bought dark souls 2 and 3 i've got dark souls 1 already um <laughs> already to get i'm i'm now i just want to punish myself with these from soft games i am now a from soft convert i almost bought um the latest one, Shakiro. Shakiro Shadows Die Twice as well. Sh Shakira hip shake twice. <laughs> um, yeah, almost got that. It was like thirty quid in uh, in in a pawn shop or something, and I thought, oh, whoa, should I get it? Oh, it'll probably be a lot cheaper by the time I finish Dark Souls two and three. Um, yeah, I'm a FromSoft convert. Absolutely. I would recommend starting off with Dark Souls one because it is. It, it sets everything up for the rest of the games, especially like play one, like definitely before three, because I did it the wrong way around. I played three and then I played one afterwards. Right. And like I, I was, there's certain areas that are like are shared and it, it's better to see them as they were. And then, well, I mean, I don't want to say as they were than as they are in the future, because as they say in Dark Souls, the flow of time itself is convoluted, which just sounds like poor, <laughs> sounds like poor storytelling to me, but I'm not going to get into an argument <laughs> with somebody. The story, right? The, the story is not handed to you in any of them. I've, I've, I've played a bit of Dark Souls 1, um, the original. I played it on PC, the original Die More edition or Die Harder edition or something it's called. Um I haven't got the HD remake. I'm probably not going to get the HD remake unless it's next to nothing, you know, unless it's a few quid. Um, two and three I've got on the PS4, so I'm assuming that the HD remakes. Um, but I put three in because I had to because I got it from this trade exchange place or whatever. It had 24 hours return on it, return on it. So mm. I thought I'd put it in and install it, make sure it runs. And I played the first like few bits. Didn't die at all. Amazingly, didn't didn't die. Because um, I've been playing Bloodborne, I think I'd have had my ass handed to me if I played that first time round. But I know that you, you know you have to dodge and use slightly different. You have to you don't have the gun, uh, a gun in that, do you? No, you've got the shield for parrying. Yeah, well, which I haven't figured out yet, but I've not played it enough. It takes it takes a little bit of effort. Yeah, well, the same with parry. It's called a parry in Bloodborne when you shoot, isn't it? It's uh, uh, when you stagger them. It's a parry. I bet it I, I didn't think it were called parrying. I thought it were called something else. Well, there's there's a stagger, there's a parry, and there's also a visceral attack as well. The visceral attack being the kind of backstab, I think, in in Dark Souls. But yeah, I, I said I'm I'm absolutely loving it. I've I've almost got my fill of the DLC already as well. Yeah, but I'm I didn't think I would be. This is why I keep talking about it because it's been such a good game. It's so so rewarding and so frustrating i haven't felt so angry at a game for long yesterday playing through the dlc i lost in excess of four hundred thousand blood echoes um because i was just being a smart ass and i was going oh i've got hundred thousand yeah, 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 to the next bit get killed i'm like oh whatever i'll get them back i know where they are and then got lost on the way trying to get to this place and the deal one of the places in the dlc is this kind of really convoluted tower you have to figure out and I'd pulled the switch and everything had changed. So where I'd lost my blood echoes, it wasn't quite where I thought it was. And I got killed by just a knobhead enemy, just a just a simple <laughs> enemy that it didn't even overwhelm me. I just it just caught me off guard, and I was like, "What? what a dead!" And I'm like, "What?" And that happened three times with about a hundred thousand blood echoes. But by that point in the game, you can get a hundred thousand pretty quickly and pretty pretty easily anyway. Um. 
but I still want to play it, and I still I'm going to play it tonight. I'm going to go downstairs, and <laughs> continue it. I'm gl- I'm glad. I'm genuinely genuinely I am glad that you've played it because it's just they are uh, people get the wrong impression with them. People love them, and then other people go, like, "Oh, it's it's supposed to be really hard, isn't it?" Well, yeah, it is. But that's why I love it. Mm. <laughs> it's hard. It's not just. It's not regenerating health. It's not everything's easy. It's not, oh, well, you know, you died. You, you save points like, it's just back there. You're fine. You know, come back on. Have another go. It's, no, you died. You've lost these things. Tough shit. Make some more. Yeah. And, and do you know, you've got a chance. We're going to be nice to you. You've got a chance to redeem yourself. But one false move and you've lost it all. I remember the first time I lost 10,000 blood echoes. And the very first time I was playing it, I think it was a couple of episodes ago I was talking about it. And I lost ten thousand, and I was so gutted. And I, I turned, I turned it off because I was like, "Fuck this game! Fuck this <laughs> game!" In there, I'm not, no, absolutely not playing this again. Pointless. And yeah, now ten thousand is what three enemies or something. You know, it's it's easy to get that much, but you also need a lot more. I think I need about sixty thousand blood echoes to upgrade my character each time now. So, but I've got there's so many more weapons and armor uh, with the DLC as well, and. Um, I'm actually considering getting PSN online as well so I can play with some mates Um, because I I know one mate in particular um, who's really into into the Souls games and uh, Souls, yeah, Blood blood Butter, the Souls Born, that's what they call them, Souls Souls Born, Born, yeah. Um, Yeah, so have you played anything else then? The only other thing I've played, I have got something coming up that I'd like to talk about looking forward to playing. All right. um, but the only other thing I've been playing recently is I've got back into playing The Binding of Isaac again. Oh, yeah, you mentioned that a few episodes ago, episodes ago, yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the first episodes I mentioned. Was it? I think so, yeah. God, how time flies. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not been a lot of change, really. They have released a couple of, I think they call them content packs or or booster packs, that was it, um, of just of like new items. And it, it's all, I think they've all come from the modding community. So they've basically like taken taken on board like what people have downloaded as mods and then just added them into the game as like an actual update, obviously with the permission of the people that have made them. And it's still a fun game. It Not much has changed gameplay wise. Like you still play it the same way. The modes are still the same. Although there was a new ending for or uh, something. But I think that was something that I just missed from last time. There was an ending for going into the void and killing the boss in that, but I can't remember the name of him. I think I ended I think I went into the void. Is it is it random when you, you can go into the void quite early in the game? I don't know if it's random. I think it's if usually with things like that you have to beat like a certain amount of time. Like if you kill if you kill mom within 25 minutes, then you get into like a special boss rush area. And then there's another one for, I think uh, it might be like 35 minutes if you get to mom's heart or something like that. But there's a few kind of like, n- not really hidden, but like time sensitive areas you can get to if you're quick enough. Right. And um, I'd missed out one of those completely and I, I got it the other day. So that was nice. It, it, everyone you find, they, they kind of give you just a little bit more of the backstory. And again, there's not, it doesn't t- really tell you a lot, but it just kind of paints a little picture for you to see of like this tragic life that this child has had who now spends his days crying on poo. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It, it, the, is, is it Justin, somebody, the guy designed that? Oh, what's his name? I've forgotten um, his name, but he, he's he's got a very uh, interesting, interesting way of writing. Very interesting. He's, he's made some interesting games. He was the same guy who did... Um, Super Meat Boy. Was it Super Meat Boy he did? Yeah. And I know he was big on like the new... Um, it's like Newgrounds. Um, All right. Big. He, he used to post a lot of things on there. And I think a lot of his early, early games were on there as well. Right. And it's from there that he kind of got into game developing. And now he, they, they do all sorts now. They do game developing and they do um, card games as well. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen one of the card games, actually. I forget his name, though. I feel like it's um, just in something, but anyway, moving yeah. on. But yeah, it's a good game. Still a good game. Still quite happy to sit and bash out a few hours on it. I've, st- I've still I've got it. I might give it another go. You keep going on about it, and it, and I like roguelikes more than I used to like them, so I should probably give it another go again. 
I just found it a little bit frustrating and the, it's I, too easy to die, but... Can I give you a little tip? It's on. it's kind of not within the spirit of the random items and stuff, but just up. You've got a second monitor, don't you? Yep. On your second monitor, open up platinumgod.co.uk and it gives you a little cheat sheet of all the items and what they do, and it all makes right. the game so much easier to actually navigate. You don't pick up one item and just think, fuck, I've ruined the game for myself. Right, okay. It, it makes a big... In fact, I think there's actually a mod you can download that gives you like a little tool tip every time you find an item that just kind of tells you what it does. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, it's a while since I've played it. I remember, yeah, some of the items seem to destroy my run-through. Um, yeah, I'll give it another go. I'll tell you, what, I'll play it before next episode. Give it a go. Maybe not next can... episode, because I know we're, it's going to be a couple of days for until our next episode. But you know, by the one after that, I'll uh, I'll give it a go again and we'll see how I get on. Is it you play with control pad? No, no, just keyboard. Okay. I, I, pre I prefer it with the keyboard. It's easy to move and shoot at the same time for me. But... Okay. It's twin stick though, isn't it? So you can. Oh yeah, you can play it twin stick. I mm. I just don't. I've got it on the switch as well, and it's just a little. I prefer using my fingers over using my thumbs to play it. That's all. Fair enough. Right, there's a few games that I know Danny has played, um, and I'd I'd prefer to talk about them that I've played recently as well. I prefer to talk about them with him, so I won't uh, I won't go into them. <clears throat> I played. Uh, a few new co-op games, couch co-op games as well, over the last few weeks. One called Death Squared, which is a Steam game. By Hideo Kojima, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your fetus in a jar. No, is that binding of Hideo Kojima, reborn, yeah. reborn. <laughs> Re-gear, re solid, I don't know. Re, yeah. um, no, Death Squared is a, it's just a puzzle game. You're, you're bots, basically, and I was playing it with a wife. You can play it two-player. Um, or you can play it four player, but I only had three people and you had to play it four player. But luckily, because I was player one, I got to control one bot with one thumb and another bot with another thumb. So it worked. It was all automated. Quite, quite cool. Um, and all you have to do is navigate these levels. Um, it's a 3D plane, but you basically have to move the bots around. And as the bots move, they have to reach so that all the bots are different colours and they have to reach squares that are the same colour as them. Um, as they move, they kind of have different effects. So sometimes they might stand on a, a particular square and spikes will appear and kill everybody else on the level uh, in certain on certain blocks. Um, other times they might move and some some blocks of their colour will push the other bots off the level. Um, so you have to kind of carefully align everybody. So it's a couch co-op game, and it's one of them games you see at expos, you know, like in, an indie dev will be showing, and everyone will be communicating and talking to each other and going, right, you should do that, you should do that. I basically am that twat. That, that <laughs> nobody else in the room understands what they're doing, and I'm just saying, well, move, just move down there, because my, my brain in computer games tends to move a lot quicker than the people I play with most of the time. Um, and I'm like, do that. So it's almost like I'm playing the game on my own, but they're just doing what I'm telling them to do. And it's... So you're, you're the captain. Yeah, I'm the director. And I don't get that much fun out of that, out of the doing the directing. It's just that, I don't know, it just naturally happens when I play that. It's all right. Uh, there's lots and lots of levels. I think we're about 30 or 40 levels in, and there's still loads to go. And there's different levels for four players as there are for two players. So there's a lot of content there. Some of that we can just throw on, you know, in between when someone's making a brew or, or someone nips the loo or something. Um, it's pretty, pretty good. Another, ga another game we play called Think of the Children. I think I might have mentioned this a while ago. Um, again, it's another indie game where you are parents and you might be out. There's a story, right? There's a, there's a story mode version of it. And it's up to four pl four players, four parents, and there's at least two kids per parent, and the kids are running around basically trying to kill themselves. And you're in like you might be on a picnic. I think it starts out in like at the beach, out for a picnic, um, at the ice cream parlor, that kind of thing. But in between each level, there's like a court case that's happening, <laughs> and it's the 
the judge calling or the, the prosecution calling witnesses against the parents and based on how well you do in the level and how many of your children die basically <laughs> yeah, yeah the the people react to it so if you do really well then the like the the people in the courtroom react in a certain way but it's still the same result at the end it's still like right well let's see if you do any better the next level and then it's just a setup really um and by the end of it you're in the outback in australia with like you, you, one of the levels is you're falling from an aeroplane, and you have to like set. You have to make sure that I, I, I can't even remember what's going on. It was a pretty quick level that one, but you have to get jetpacks or something to make sure that you and you put the jetpacks on your kids, and then you're in the outback in Australia, and there's like some guy getting burnt with sunburn. You have to put sun cream on this guy whilst saving kids from an alligator. Whilst saving another kid from uh, a kangaroo, it's incredibly stereotypical. Um, but yeah, it's again a good mental kind of couch co-op game. It's not. It's not as good as like Overcooked, like craziness. That's a lot of fun and a lot of uh, a lot of cooperation required. But this is more right. I'll do this section of the the level and I'll run back and forth and you do that area. You know. Um, yeah, it's all right. I probably wouldn't. I think I got it for a few quid, so it was worth it. But yeah, probably not. Uh, not worth it. I think. Other than that, for couch player, that's all I've. Uh, all I've got. Have you got anything else this this week? Matt? Not nothing really. I was hoping to talk about um, the Outer Worlds, which I have just finished downloading before the show, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. So mm. hopefully, I'll get a few hours on that, and then I can talk about that with you guys uh, on his next show. Yeah, absolutely. I'm this close, this close to getting it. It's a pound. I know. A nice round pound is all it takes. <sighs> Got too many other games to play, but I am playing game mostly games. The ones that are taking up my big chunks of my time are games that I've already got, I've already played, and probably already completed as well. So maybe mm -hmm. I need a new, maybe I need a new game. I mean, the reviews are pretty good. For it. A lot of people are saying if you liked New Vegas, then this is exactly the game for you. So, hey, I, I have to admit, I never played New Vegas much. I played about ninety minutes of it, uh, but I'd I'd already played Fallout Three, Fallout Four, you know, Fallout Four by that point. I got New Vegas quite late. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. <clears throat> it's a pound you'd be left not to. If if I download it and start playing it, do I have to keep paying for the subscription? To be able to play it, unless you buy the game, I think. Mm. But the question is, like, you know, are you going to play? I mean, to be fair, you could pay. You could pay a pound. You could blast through it in a month, and then if you want to play it down the road, it'll it'll be cheaper anyway. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It's very tempting on uh, on Xbox Game Pass for a quid. Maybe I will. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you next week and you'll have completed it <laughs> yeah well is it one of them games though that it's it's got lots of side missions and it's a huge open world like Fallout from what I've seen I think there's six or seven different worlds you can visit and I don't imagine that it's going to be like a complete world to explore it'll be like a curated section of it I yeah. think it's you've got to think of it more as like just like the little sandboxes so you've got so many different things and there's like there's a lot to do with i think a lot of it is about like the corporatization of people in space like everyone's controlled by corporations and i yeah. think different planets have different corporations and things like that so it's i'm i'm keen to play it and the combat looks fun the rpg elements in it look exactly like what i wanted fallout 4 to be like there's you know big dialogue tree options it's not just yes no no, but angry, stupid answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think you might have convinced me. <laughs> I'll see. I've, I need to again. I need to look through my list of games that I'm playing at the moment. I mean, The Witcher Three is one because I've got DLC on that I haven't played. Bloodborne needs to be finished. The the Souls games can wait because I've got them all. They're not on any subscription or anything like that. I've got them. They're all all sat there waiting. Factorio, as I said, I'm probably not probably going to shelve that anyway. Other than that, I think I might I might be looking for a new game anyway, so maybe I will. I, I mean, it's it's only a thirty gig download as well. So really, 
I, I don't think it's going to be the biggest game in the world. You could. It seems like you could probably blast through it in maybe 20 hours, 25 hours. I don't know. That's, a, that's th- a shock. I didn't think that. I, I get the feeling that the way it's set up, that it's going to be quite easy for them to add DLC to it with new worlds and things like that. So they, I haven't heard anything announced, but I think that'll be the path to go down with it, which might might be a reason to keep paying for Game Pass if they're coming out with new content for it. So we'll see. If the DLC is included in the Game Pass, it might not be. Yeah. Although it makes sense because then it keeps people paying for the Game Pass. If they're giving away a 50 quid game for a pound for a month, then... Mm. We'll see. Anyway, it's, it's just me speculating. Aye. Uh, right. Well, so the only other games I played um, today, I, I got it, it was on sale on the st- on Steam, um, and someone recommended it to me. And with me liking management sims, I thought I'd give Project High Rise a go. Okay. Um, have you heard of that? No. So it didn't look particularly interesting when I looked at it. I thought I thought oh, I'll give it a go, and basically it's you. It's a two D plane, looks a bit like Fallout Shelter type type job, um, and you're managing a high rise. So you have to install um, power, water, uh, you know, create office blocks, and rent out rent out the office space to accountants, game developers, different people, and they all have different requirements, and you have to keep everybody happy. And then if someone's in a thoroughfare and there's too much noise, they have to move them. And, you know, it, it's like a city skyline crossed with a prison architect, crossed with a, you know, crossed with Fallout Shell. It's kind of a... It, it, it got very deep very quick, but I don't think I'm going to play it again. So I actually got a refund on it on Steam. Um, which isn't, right. I don't normally do that. I usually go, right, I'll come back to that. But I thought, you know what, there's two, I've, there's already at least three or four other games that are similar to this that do it a bit better. It, City Skylines is is not the same game, but better. And, and I can't really describe it better than that without playing it. It's all right, don't get me wrong. And if you like Management Sims and you want something fairly simple, fairly easy, um, I just I wasn't that keen on the aesthetic either. It was a little bit. It looked. Um, have you seen Mad Men? Yeah. You know the intro sequence on Mad Men where he's falling from the building. Right. Uh, it yeah. looks like that kind of. You know, like um, what's that DiCaprio film where he? Uh, Inception. No, the 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 one where he's pretending to be a doctor and then he's. Oh, um, catch he's, me if you can. Yeah, you know the intro sequence to Catch Me If You Can. That kind of kind of plain pastel. Yeah, like vector images sort of thing. Yeah, um, a little bit more detailed than that, but not much. And yeah, I don't know. I just it didn't strike me immediately, and I thought, you know what? I only spent what seven quid on it with all the all of the DLC, and there's there's about <laughs> eight different DLCs for it with di- different areas. I think different ones, Boston and one San Francisco, and you know, that kind of thing. I just thought, you know what? Probably not going to play it again. If you like it, go for it. If you like that kind of thing, and that's your game, go for it. But I. I I just felt like there's other games that I want to play. Um, other than that, I've been, I went to I went to a retro games um, event a couple of weeks ago. Okay, something called um, Play Blackpool or Play Events, Play Expo. Uh, I think they, they do them all over the country, but we, we have one in Blackpool every year, or sometimes twice a year. And they they have hundreds of um, of consoles, arcade cabinets. They've got a LAN set up. People were playing Unreal Tournament 2004 on it. Um, last year they were playing Quake 2 on it. Um, and they've got, I mean, I'm talking about everything from like really old Ataris and Commodore 64s and Binatones and obscure consoles that you, you know, you've know you maybe seen once before. If Even if you're a collector, you've probably never seen, you know. Um, to modern like indie games as well. There was people playing StarCraft on a LAN there as well. It wasn't a LAN party because you pay an entry ticket and there was thousands of people that went into it, um, but you just go and you can just go and play on all the arcades, and it's really cool, really cool event. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. I go almost every year now, but this year there was one game in particular that I played that I. F- um, there's a book called Ready Player One, and it became a film. Um, in the book, you don't do it in the film, but in the book, the final game that he has to play to beat 
that or win, you know, I'm not going to go into more detail than that, is a game called Joust. Um, and I've never played it, and I saw it at the arcade, and I played it, and I was like, because it was quite, in the book, it's quite a thing, you know, and it's like, as a, a gamer, and you're reading this thing, and you, you can see the excitement in the, the author's kind of writing, and I played it, and I was like, actually, I could totally see why this was the final game, because it's really challenging, really, all you are is this, you're on the back of an emu or something, and you've, you're jousting other emus, and or, or something like that, it's like some kind of bird, um, and you'd, all you do is you, you joust them or you land on the heads and then they drop an egg and you have to collect the eggs. There's probably more to it the further you get into it and the, like most arcade games, the more you play it, the faster and more frantic it gets. But I really, really enjoyed it and I've never touched it before um, considering it was a, a very well-known 80s arcade game. Um, I just completely missed me. It might have been an American kind of job. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a, it was a good little game. That's awesome. <laughs> but other than that, I would highly recommend if you, if um, if Play Expo is anywhere near any of you, get on it because it's a, it's a really great event. You pay about thirteen quid or something, and you get to go in. There's also a, like a, a a sales hall as well where you can go in and buy retro games, and uh, and I mean, there's everybody, like everybody from the entire country that sells retro games is there. If you want, if you want to get Chrono Trigger for the Jap SNES. It'll be there. It'll be 350 quid, but it'll be there, you know, that kind of job. Some of the prices on some of the retro games these days, I mean, wow. I yeah. I must have a... I've, I collect a lot of games. I must have an absolute gold mine downstairs. The amount of rare... Um, so, some things like... I've got the GameCube version of um, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, and that goes for... 80 quid, 90 quid on eBay now. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause it's just cause it's, it's the better, ver- it's the best version of Metal Gear and it was quite a rare find back in the day as well. Um, yeah, good. Awesome. I, I think I've exhausted myself. <laughs> <laughs> I say that there are other games, but I'm not going to go into that. I, I think we've probably <laughs> covered enough for this week. <laughs> we have. Yeah. So we're not going to do our preview hot pants. We're going to talk about some news. The news is well out of date. The stuff that we had been compiling anyway, anyway, um, Plus, we're not that bothered about the politics and the going I, I on think, in the gaming world. I think if you want to know more, if if you don't know what's been going on, then I, I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's been at everybody's throats for the last couple of weeks, so uh, we'll let it we'll let it cool down, and we'll we'll talk about something nicer on Wednesday. Yeah, it's the the tinter web, though, isn't it? That's just what what it's like. Yeah. Hopefully, by by the next show. I should have completed Bloodborne. And I should have completed the Bloodborne DLC as long as I get time in the next few days because I don't always at the beginning of the week get time to play games. But um, So hopefully I'll, have to, I'll stop talking about that soon. <laughs> but yeah, we'll probably close the show now. Yeah. Unless you've got any other good. games you you, need, you want to talk about, Matt? No, like I said, I, uh, I want to get on with playing The Outer Worlds. So I'll... I'll get you. I'll let you know my thoughts on that next session. Yeah, good stuff. So yes, that is the end of the show. Thanks for ev- to everybody for listening. It has been very different today. Um, we will try and get back on form next week by the next episode. It's, it's fine. We'll uh, we'll pick it back up. Yes. So um, yes. Yeah, so thanks. Uh, thanks for coming. You can uh, you can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. You can also follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. And all that's left to say is goodbye. Ta-ta. Bye-bye.